Today on the Newly Pace Truck Build, I'm gonna install these Dakota Digital gauges. This is Dakota Digital's HDX gauge set. Now, not only are these gauges gonna look really nice in the interior of our dually, but they're also gonna be significantly more accurate than the gauges that were originally in the truck. Now, this kit comes with the control box, which is where all the wiring goes to display the information in the instrument cluster. And it also comes with new sensors and wiring to make sure you're getting accurate information. Now, I also opted to grab the Universal Gear Shift Sender Kit. Now this sensor is gonna sit on our transmission and tell us where our gear shift indicator is and then display that information on our gauge set. The first part of this install is to install the gauges in the dash. First thing I'm gonna do is cut out this connector. I'm never gonna put the stock gauges back in and I need to tap into this harness. So I'm gonna cut these off and I'm gonna pull the harness down to where our, to about where our control box is gonna mount. And also you wanna disconnect your battery. I think that kind of goes without saying, but you don't wanna short anything out and cause any other issues. I know somebody out there needs this, so hit me up if you do. Be more than happy to send it to you. I'm gonna have to cut the retainer for the gauge. Uh, yeah, we're gonna have to cut that out. On this cluster, you only have two cables to connect to the back. You have your main data cable and a buzzer. So I've already run both of those through our new opening. All right, so we'll just uh, reinstall this radio, put a bezel on and be done. Ooh, that looks nice. Hopped over to the engine bay, found some more wiring issues. There were three coolant temperature sensors that were wired into the harness. Why? Why do we have three coolant temperature sensors? There's one right here on this head, one on this head, and then one right there. So I use the supplied Dakota Digital temperature sensor that has its own harness that's supplied with the kit. I also installed the oil pressure sensor, which is uh, way down here. That has its own harness as well. So the original gauge cluster it was reading all over the place. So I don't know if it was the harness or the sensors or the gauge cluster. So we're just gonna put in the stuff that was supplied with the kit, connect those, run them through the firewall right here. You're gonna be able to see that right there. So we'll be able to have those in the cab. So let's jump in there real quick and show you what I'm doing there. Now this is a wiring diagram for the instrument panel. So it's telling me what color wires are coming off and what they're for. And then I've been transferring what color wires are going to wear on the control panel. Now, one thing I'm not gonna use with the kit is the speed sensor. Since this has a 4L80E transmission, it already has a vehicle speed sensor on it, which means I just need to run the light blue and black wire to the signal line on the control unit, and we should be good there. I think what I'm gonna do is wire everything up the way I think it needs to be and then start running some tests before I do a uh, wire it up and try to install the control box. Tan and white. This harness definitely doesn't have as much play as I thought it would, but that's okay. 
All right, got her mocked up here. Just got the box kind of wired in. Let's see what happens. I haven't turned it on yet. Well, that came on, but that did not come on. I'm gonna check my ground real quick. All right, I have no idea what just happened, but I checked my constant, constant 12 volt ignition and ground and it was all good. Turned the key on again, it didn't do anything. And then I just turned the key on and this happened. So we have a low voltage on our battery. All right, let's, uh, let's uh, work on this battery real quick. All right, I put a battery tender on there. So let's look at this again. Turn the ignition on. Still low. Oh. Okay. Oh, and then it went away. I guess it uh, charged a little bit. It's kind of jumping around. Okay. Uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna work on this for a second. This truck just keeps on giving. I just uh, rewired the entire uh, taillight wiring harness of the truck, and then I found some more uh, bad connections and started fooling around with the rest of the harness, and I finally got things working pretty good. So let's check out these gauges now. Turn these on first. All right. I still have to calibrate the fuel gauge and I'm getting this warning because I have to calibrate the odometer and calibrate the speedometer. But let's try to crank this over. Our tack works, oil pressure works, temperature works. I had it running for a little bit trying to figure out this other stuff. Volt gauge works. I don't know if the miles per hour works yet. I have to get this thing out on the road, but Still don't have seats. But if we turn the lights on, it should dim. Yep. So our dimmer works. And then our signals. So those, those are down here. Awesome. All right, now it's time to wire in the gear indicator. Somehow I'm supposed to attach this somewhere. And then when that shift rod moves, it moves with the sensor, but it's also right here. So I'm wondering if maybe we could do something, do something right here, and then run the wire up that way. Mm, I gotta think on this one. Here's what we got so far. So I, I basically copied the instructions for the 4L60 transmission. And I had to modify this bracket a little bit. I just had to elongate this hole. And then we're able to put the uh, sensor right here. I think it's gonna work better facing in just because of how close it is to the shifter, which is right here. All right, we got our shifter connected to the sensor. I uh, tested it out. Everything worked really good. It clears the two studs that are on either side of the sensor. So now I'm gonna run the harness up to the control box. All right, I got the wire up into the cab and got it wired into the box. We got our ignition, ground, and one wire out to the Dakota Digital control box. So now we're gonna program this and then the gauges should be done. So the first thing we have to do is hold the set button and turn on the ignition and that should get us into programming. So let's go ahead and start this process. Holding set. All right, it's all red. It's supposed to be red. Red is for t positive 12 volt outputs and essentially decoded digital gauges. Um, so we're gonna go ahead and press and hold the set button to save the setting. Okay, so the truck should be in park. It's in park, so now we 
have park flashing here. We press and hold for three seconds. Now we got to shift to reverse. We're in reverse right now. Press and hold for three seconds. And then that's the process. That's pretty simple. All right, you press and hold. Status is green. All right. Hey, look at that. When I'm in park, reverse, neutral, overdrive, and it's shifting through. Pretty cool. All right, now let's look at the gauges. Okay, here we are, ignition's on. You guys can see right there, on park, reverse, neutral, drive, and then drive, two, one. That is super cool. Well, that's the next day. It's actually the end of the next day. I've been taking my time with the wiring. I hate it, but it's gonna be worth it in the end. So let me show you guys where I ended up putting the control box and the retro sound radio. But first, look at my speed access panel. Just use some Velcro and it works out pretty good. So I actually mounted the control box here and here. This is for the gear selector. This is for the Dakota Digital gauges. And again, I just attached it with Velcro, nothing crazy. And if you look in here, I don't know if you're gonna be able to see this, but I put my radio right here. This is the radio right here. It is actually also Velcroed to the steering column support. Really hard to see. It's very tight up in there, but I was finding it, it was really difficult to try to find a way to fasten that and get the tools up there. So I said, you know what? We're just gonna use some Velcro today. And that inspired me to make my access panel. Look at that. So you can actually program the color of the gauges to match your interior. So I have this mat basically matching the AC control. And when you turn on the dimmer switch, dims down, everything looks nice and neat. I got all the gauges working with the exception of the calibrating the speedometer and the odometer is not set up yet either. And if I turn you guys around, you can see that I've started to put on the interior pieces and man, this is actually starting to finally look like a complete truck. What is that noise? Oh, it's a battery. I got a battery tender running right now. Apparently my alternator's putting in 12.1 volts to the battery. So that does absolutely nothing. What do you guys think of these gauges? Do you like the way Dakota Digital sets it up by wiring everything into the control box and running the data cable to the gauge set? Or would you guys rather have an original gauge cluster in your classic trucks? And believe it or not, this is a classic now. It's 30 years old, which is pretty wild. Anyway, guys and gals, that's gonna do it for me on this video. I definitely appreciate you watching. Thanks for tuning in. I'll see you guys very soon.